The financial crisis of 2008 has undoubtedly expanded as we see the global political tension escalating. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. I want to touch on a few different types of points today, connect all the dots into the deeper teachings of what you will simply not hear anywhere else. Let's begin with Greece. As I do often, just get on a few points here out of this article from Open Europe. As we look at cash and ATM withdrawal limits, foreign transfer controls, time requirements or taxes, and physical controls. We need to understand what could happen in Greece as a predictor of what could happen in any country around the world. They begin with the issue of Cyprus. They instituted the withdrawal limitations. So you had your money in the bank, let's say $10,000, and you wanted to take it out, but all you could get was 300 euro. So, what did you do? Well, you have to go every single day and try to get your 300 out and 300 out, but inflation is quickly eroding away at your money. This could happen in every single country. Then you look at foreign transfer controls. If you think you have your money invested elsewhere into another country, or perhaps you live in that country and you want to send your money overseas... Well, they're going to institute these controls. They've already begun on a small scale in the U.S. and other places, of course, where basically you're unable to transfer money unless it meets certain criteria. The criteria is becoming ever more restrictive. This is what could happen on a mass scale. Time requirements, we see that you could certainly have your money. But what if it takes a week to get to you and there's a major inflation? What if there's a crisis? What if you need that money today, but it's going to take you a week to get that money? Well, these are the kind of things that are not being talked about in the mainstream media. Very important to note, not just for Greece, but also for every single country. We have many countries that are facing the exact same problems of Greece, but Greece is just the one at the forefront. We have Spain, Italy, and uh, others, Portugal, and basically every country around the world in massive amounts of debt. Greece is just really the one we have our eyes on at the moment. Let's move on to this here. Very important news. Governor Abbott signs legislation to establish a state bullion depository. This is out of Texas.gov, right from the official website. They signed the House Bill 483. This law is going to repatriate a billion dollars of gold bullion from the Federal Reserve in New York to Texas. Now remember that not even the Texans trust the Federal Reserve. Nobody in the world trusts the Federal Reserve. Sure, they'll take their handouts, their billions and trillions of dollars, but they don't trust them. And you could see how they are repatriating the gold at a massive rate rate. Today I signed the Bill 483 to provide a secure facility for the state of Texas, state agencies, and Texan citizens to store gold bullion and other precious metals. This is very important just to show you the level of trust in the financial system as a whole. Let's move on. As we look into Goldman Sachs, one of the big insiders in the financial realm, apparently they had called for a reform of high-speed stock trading before Flash Boys, the book, spurred the outcry. Yes, of course, they are so concerned about what's happening here. They don't want this to occur. They don't want all of this high-speed trading to cause instability, even though though they profit from it, their friends profit from it. The bank's electronic equity execution unit is hiring executives from Morgan Stanley and investing in software, trading infrastructure, and its dark pool. They're expanding this. All of these major financial institutions are doing so. It's not just Goldman Sachs. They are all in this together. High-frequency trading is the way that they control the markets. Most of the trading around the world takes place with this high frequency trading it's not going to stop it's only going to get worse it is quickly deep uh, really displacing all of the actual investors in the market and we have all this garbage and fake 
investments that are happening out there. All these trades are just taking place. They crash the market a thousand points in a second. These are the kind of things that we are going to see. Increased volatility, not because people are getting spooked, but because the algorithms simply don't know how to react and they freak out. More on this fakeness, let's look at this very interesting chart that shows the correspondence in between the Fed funds rate, which obviously dropped down significantly when the financial crisis was approaching. And now today is it essentially at 0%. And then how that all corresponds to the rate hike talk. So they have mentioned rate, uh, you know, having a rate hike thousands of times over the last while since the financial crisis even though they have not raised that rate a single time they continue to talk about it and what i'm trying to suggest here is that they don't even have to increase the rates all they need to do is to talk about it they don't even need to actually have qe they could just say we're going to be printing money soon don't worry about it and the stock market will go up. This is all about being fake. Fake is the new real. Fiat is the new wealth. That's what we need to realize. People are looking for fundamentals, and I do believe that the fundamentals are, are important, but daily, these are not what's happening with the stock market, with the bond market, the treasuries, and everything like that. It has nothing to do with the fundamentals. So let's move on to this out of my book. In fact, during the recession of 2008, the interest rate went down to 0% and has remained around that level ever since. The purpose of this is to ensure that there is maximum flow of credit in the market by creating easy access to credit. The problem with this is that it encourages speculation leading to bankruptcies, foreclosures, and gambling. Why do you think this high frequency trading, the dark pools, all of this other gambling is going on is because they are able to borrow money at 0%. All of these big banks, they get the bailouts, they get all the money to flow into their own private vaults essentially and they're gambling with the money they don't have to worry about it because they'll just get bailed out again I talked about it in my book and now we're showing the same thing today many years later and then we go on to this issue right here Matteo Renzi the Italian Prime Minister vowed to, quote, hurt Europe if other EU countries, including Britain, do not ha help tackle its migrant crisis. Very interesting to note what's happening here. And they have the arrival of tens of thousands of migrants on Italy's shores. This is a very serious issue because the nations bombed countries like Libya and the people are fleeing, searching for safety and Italy happens to be the closest destination so they are bombarded by what's occurring right now. If Europe chooses solidarity, good. If it doesn't, we have plan B ready, but it would first and foremost hurt Europe. Very interesting words that he's coming out with. We'll see what happens here, but we can definitely see that Italy is in a deep level of recession at this point. They have no growth. Their GDP relies on illegal conduct, as I've talked about many times before. And yet they have this massive flow of migrants coming in and they cannot deal with it at all. This is a government that is overburdened with debt. Let's move on to this here. Something else that I'd like to talk about. Scientists warming could cut population to 1 billion. This is back in 2009 at the Copenhagen conference, the climate meeting. A scientist known for his aggressive stance on climate policy made an apocalyptic prediction. So this individual here, which I believe is a Vatican speaker as well, had some interesting things to say. So I'm going to forward further down the article. In a very cynical way, it's a triumph for science because at last we have stabilized something, namely the estimates for the carrying capacity of the planet, namely below 1 billion people. So this individual says, you want to stabilize everything, you need to get this population down to 1 billion no matter what side you are on with this whole global warming, climate change, you know, there hasn't been any global warming for 17 years, but it's global warming. And 
regardless, whatever side you're on, and I don't even care, if this individual is talking about the 1 billion people that are allowed to live and the 6 billion who have to die, is he going to be part of that? Which side? Which side will you be a part of? So this is what concerns me the most, is that it's always the elite, the guys who are consistently flying around on their private jets, they want to go up into space, they want to do all of these things that are causing the maximum amount of pollution. You know, you have the royalty of Britain talking about how we need to snub the tub, you can look that one up, snub the tub, and meanwhile, they have massive palaces that are consistently running, full operational at the same time. This is a complete joke. The people who are the biggest proponents of climate change, that we need to fix all of this, are the ones who use the most energy, waste it all, in fact. So this is what I have to say. Let's move on to something this individual also said. To deal with the climate issues, he's also called for an Earth Constitution that would transcend the UN Charter, along with the creation of a global council elected by all the people of Earth, and a planetary court, a transnational legal body, open to the appeals from everybody, especially with respect to violations of the Earth Constitution. This is called global government. They are now calling it global governance because, well, that's not a government, it's just governance. That's all. And we don't have to go to the Congress to have to go to war. We will go to NATO. We will go to the UN. These are the kind of things that we are consistently hearing and more and more it's just becoming passe. It's just becoming something that is just, you know, whatever. Who cares? Don't have to worry about it. Sure, we'll sign the Earth Constitution. No, Congress doesn't need to even vote on it. The people don't need to even have a say. And that's what upsets me. And then we get onto this next piece of information. You've seen it literally hundreds of times before. Texas police shut down girls' lemonade stand demand a permit. This happens to be out of 2015, but these have been going on forever now, shutting down girls' lemonade stands, people's lemonade stands. Some of the most ridiculous things I've ever heard of in my life. The people were trying to raise $100 to have a ticket, to buy their father a ticket for his birthday, I believe it was. So ridiculous, and this kind of behavior is expanding, and the police that actually did this kind of work are really a part of this global scheme. They know that there's nothing wrong with a lemonade stand, yet they shut them down. I mean, this is... It's just so incredible to see what the police will do knowing that there's nothing wrong with this. This is just little girls trying to raise their money for their father. They don't know any other way, so they just has set up this lemonade stand and things like this are happening every single day we are seeing the tyranny escalate we are seeing this global governance taking place this and agenda 21 which is becoming a global policy but enacted at the local level search the name of your city and then agenda 21 and i assure you in most cases you will find the actual document that your city has adopted for the uh, induction of Agenda 21. They've probably already begun on this. This is a criminal act that has taken place before our very eyes. Remember that this isn't just about the financial sector. This is not just about politics, but there is something very deep, very sinister going on today. If you found this video informative, please give me a thumbs up. Always ready and willing to hear your opinions, your uh, really, everything that you need to tell me, please tell me through the emails at david at the money gps.com. Comment down below, do what you can, share the videos, create your own videos, talk to your friends and family, share what you can. This information needs to get out to every single person. If you found this video informative, I know that you'll find my book, The Money GPS, even more informative. And you can actually look through the book if you go to Amazon, they have a look inside feature and you can flip through the book for yourself and see if you like it. Take care.